development out here on the fringes of the city. Um, it's not going great, so I think there could definitely be some some changes to that. Um, my main interests are connectivity, you know, connectivity for cars, but also for pedestrians and bicyclists, and how we how we grow infrastructure before we put people um, in an area where their only alternative is to to drive in a car to get somewhere. Wonderful. Welcome. Francis. Hi, everyone. My apologies for not um, having a, a visual. Um, I, I learned that my um, my browser doesn't support video right now, so I'll, I'll, I'll download the, the app between now and the next meeting. But I'm happy to be here. Um, I was born and raised in Idaho and then left after um, college graduation um, and was gone for 30 years before moving back here 10 years ago. And um, professionally, I was a specialist in corporate culture transformation and strategic planning for businesses. And right now I'm, I've transitioned been forced to transition through COVID uh, pretty much into retirement. So I have, uh, I have some time available and I'm very interested in contributing to, the, to this group. Um, I live uh, kind of what I think is the confluence, the crossroads where Boise, Garden City, Meridian and Eagle all meet. And um, I've always wondered I've, I've heard it's difficult for these various cities and communities to, to get together and create more of a uh, collaborative vision for this region. I, I don't know if our group will have any ability to um, delve into that area, but I, I um, in Southern, when I was in Southern California, I was on the Homeowners Association board um, but more than that, I was able to witness over that three decade period, um, you know, really the detrimental effects of urban sprawl, the, uh, in contrast with our community, which was very planned, had a population uh, growth cap on it and had very strict zoning and then communities around us that were somewhere in between. And so I'm really interested for the future of Boise residents and community at large to listen to what various stakeholders have to say and to be able to contribute to, uh, to decisions or to at least perspectives moving forward. So I'm happy to be here. It sounds like a really good group. Um, and I appreciate you all being here too. Thank you. How about Ian? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. All right, um, my name is Ian McLaughlin. Um, I'm an architect with uh, Pivot North Architecture here in Boise. Um, my experience has primarily been um, uh, multifamily mixed use projects um, before I should say that I'm a recent transplant here. So before moving here, I've lived all over the city and hope to bring some of the diverse experiences with other cities and other cities codes, um, as well as how not to do things. Um, so uh, I, would, I would also add that um, my wife and I are recent homeowners uh, in the West Bench area. Um, so we're super excited to be part of this community and um, I'm looking forward to uh, hopefully making a difference with the zoning code rewrite. And um, my, I guess, areas of interest are, you know, looking at sustainable and uh, thoughtful design and growth um, as opposed to just uncontrolled sprawl. So uh, thank you very much for uh, letting me be a part of this community. Thank you, Ian. Hillary. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Great. I'm just trying to make sure my Microsoft Teams works as well. Um, my name's Hillary Vaughn. 
I am a transactional real estate and finance attorney at Holland and Hart. Um, I have been practicing for about 15 years uh, here in the Boise area, and I've been intimately involved in policy and real estate and have interacted with the zoning code and the regulatory structure many, many times. Um, I also served on design review with um, Jessica for a while. That was fun. And uh, also was involved in some of the city's planning efforts with respect to the design review guidelines. Um, I live in the Highlands, also over by Jessica, um, but I've also lived in Southeast Boise and uh, the Northwest area. Um, I am a native Idahoan, but I kind of grew up all over the place and then came back to Boise after law school. And I am like Drew, very, um, very interested in the growth of this area and want to see it grow sustainably and affordably and equitably. Um, and I, I want, I am very interested in hearing everybody's points of view from around the city as to how we can, you know, come to some solutions for, you know, what is going to be a, probably a fast growth period for Boise. Thank you. Andy. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's, a, it's an honor to be here. My name is Andy Erstad, and I'm uh, principal of Erstad Architects, a 22-year-old firm in the Valley, and prior to that, a, a principal with another esteemed organization. Um, I have, uh, I'm an anomaly. I'm a fifth-generation Boisean. Um, so for many of you who don't know what that is, uh, I, I can remember when the city was 68,000 people. Um, I've had the good fortune to sit for 12 and a half years on design review and chair that committee for six or so years, uh, straddling a couple of administrations. And um, my interest in the zoning rewrite is uh, very similar to most everyone else's. Um, I engage this, I engage the zoning ordinance on a daily basis. And uh, there are, uh, it's outdated, it's tired. Um, it really could use, uh, all of our collective wisdom and work with the consultants and um so yeah i'm i'm excited to see to see uh where we go and how this evolves uh, an anecdotal comment um i remember i i too went through high school here went to college of idaho then left boise for my architecture studies and came back 12 years later and um I remember a friend saying, gosh, I could have bought a house in the North End on my credit card. Um, and that house in the North End now is almost a million dollars. Um, we have, uh, we've been discovered and uh, I don't know that the zoning ordinance undiscovers Boise, but it sure will help us plan better and more effectively, more efficiently. And, and um, so I'm honored to be part of it. Thank you, Andy. How about Ben? All right. I'm used to being towards the end of the alphabet, at least. <laughs> uh, my name is Ben Zamzo. I am very grateful for the opportunity to be here and learn from you all. Um, Andy has me beat. I'm a fourth generation Boisean and was born and raised here. I live in the North End with my wife, who's a second grade teacher. She's my high school sweetheart at Bishop Kelly. And we've got two little ones, uh, Calvin's four, Amaya's two, and we love to travel. We've been to 60 countries. And I didn't know a lot about land use planning and urban planning when we visited a lot of those countries, but you know what works and what doesn't when you're boots on the ground. And I've had a lot of fun learning since then about uh, a lot of those countries and cities. Professionally, I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Rocky Mountain Companies. We're a downtown Boise company. We own several businesses, but our principal business is commercial real estate development. We've done a few notable historic uh, urban projects, Payette Brewing, the 805 Idaho Building where Fork is, CSHQA, Biomark. Those are some of our more noteworthy ones. And then we've done an a number of projects that deliver important services to our neighborhoods. We develop all the primary healths and have done a lot of Napa auto parts and Del Tacos and Bluebird car washes. I'd say we're a medium size commercial development company. We've got 13 employees, two architects, in-house counsel, 
we're not big, but we're not little either. Uh, so we're obviously in the, the zoning ordinance every day. Uh, one thing we have not done any residential. So just note that because I know that's a, a big part of the ordinance and I won't be able to speak eloquently to that. I'd say the three things that I'm looking forward to the most, number one would just be learning from all of you. Uh, Drew's also already sending me homework. He sent me three books to read. So I'll get on that, Drew. Uh, number two would be, like many of you, you know, making sure that Boise provides my children the same opportunities that I've had, both recreationally and professionally. And then number three would be uh, kind of getting into the details. I'd like to close any gaps between the ordinance and Blueprint Boise. I think that's where we've gotten tripped up a few times. And I know in Andrea's agenda here, which I love, is uh, increase the predictability of land use decisions. I think professionally from the development community, that's a big topic for us. Perfect, thank you. How about Esther? Can you hear me? Yes. Hello, uh, my name is Esther Saha. I have lived in Boise since 1995. I grew up in Idaho, South Central Idaho, um, went to school at Boise State and have never left. Um, my professional uh, background really is in environmental policy. I spent the, hmm, say probably the last 16 years, I um, my, my work was around uh, hazardous waste, nuclear waste, drinking water, and wastewater systems um, in Idaho. I transitioned over a little almost two years ago um, to uh, civil rights work. Um, so that used to be my volunteer work, and now that is my full-time job with some environmental um, uh, off work. So uh, let's see, I have been involved um, with City of Boise activities and Ada County activities since the late 1990s. Um, I moved to the Collister Neighborhood Associate or Collister Neighborhood in 2004 and became involved with our Neighborhood Comprehensive Plan um, shortly thereafter. Have sat on the board um, of our Neighborhood Association off and on since 2007. Currently, the I am the um, planning and zoning board committee uh, lead uh, for our neighborhood association. Um, I have volunteered at our one of our title um, one schools in not necessarily our neighborhood, but very close to our neighborhood, Taft Elementary for about 13 years um, and have done a number of different or have been involved in a number of different um, community volunteer um, efforts. Um, associated with uh, social justice and environmental justice um, issues. And I am thrilled to be part of, of um, this group. Um, my interest is, you know, if you, zoning is critical um, to all these other important parts of the community from housing to housing affordability, transportation, transportation access, environment and when I speak of environment I'm speaking of water quality uh, but equally as important especially even though we're dealing with um, smoke uh, fire wildland smoke issues now we do have um, we do have challenges in the Treasure Valley with ozone levels during certain parts of, of the year. Um, so, you know, all of these things are interconnected and I feel like the only way that we, that I can make an impact is to bring those up as well as um, I can't speak for the entire Latino community in the Treasure Valley because I am just one person, um, but I can bring a different perspective to the table that um, other folks that are participating in this activity, this effort, um, may not be aware of. Thank you. Thank you. And Andrea? Yeah. I think we went to grad school together. <laughs> Did you get your master's of public administration? Yeah. You used uh, to work in PhD, right? Yes, I yep. did. Okay. It's nice to see you again. Good to see you. 
Patrick. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. My name is Patrick. Uh, I live in the north end of Boise. What brings me to this issue is a passion about ensuring housing affordability across the income spectrum and that Boise is a welcoming place to anybody who would like to live here so that my son has, can afford a home when he grows up and so that uh, people of lesser means are not forced to commute from far away if they would prefer to live in Boise. Um, so I want to help create a home for everybody to use uh, Mayor McLean's kind of framing on this. And uh, I do think uh, finding ways to allow for more housing options is a big part of that. A lot of recent zoning reforms across the country have taken relatively bold action with new ideas. And I hope that we can see some of them come to fruition here in Boise and allow a home for everyone across the income spectrum. Thanks, Patrick. Uh, Roberta. Thanks, Andrea. Hello, everyone. My name is Roberta D'Amico, and my interest is varied for a number of reasons. I worked for 35 years with the National Park Service, so I have um, experience with a number of working in parks and land management and visitors and recreation. Um, I moved here to Boise in 1999 from Everglades National Park to spend the rest of my career at the National Interagency Fire Center working in wildland fire and communications. Prior to my experience at Everglades, what I'd like to share is um, I worked on a land management plan in Nebraska where there was a lot of growth happening and there was no zoning. And that was a great exposure for, for me as to why zoning is so important. So I am looking forward to learning um, from the group that's here from about Boise zoning and how we can make Boise more sustainable um, for growth, for environmental reasons, for historic reasons, for preservation, to um, help all of those in the community as far as affordability. And one of the other pieces I'd share is working in the National Park Service, you work with a lot of different communities and the ability to hear different perspectives. And I look forward to working to, in a collaborative manner to figure out how we could go forward together. Thank you. Thank you. Um, how about Chris? Hi, um, so I am Chris Vanderstow. Um, I teach linguistics and gender studies at Boise State University. So. Um, I am bringing sort of an educational background to this. Um, I live um, right off the Broadway corridor, right near the stadium. So um, really close to the Greenbelt and really close to the stadium. Um, although I used to live right in the heart of downtown next door to Erstat Architects, actually. Um, I used to see that out of my window. Um, but um, so I am a lifelong renter. Um, I, from the time I moved here five years ago, I'm already priced out of the market as a university professor. Um, and so that's an important thing for me. Um, and I'm also someone that utilizes uh, public transit and, uh, you know, walking. I'm a pedestrian frequently, um, and during non-pandemic times, I use uh, public transit when it's even available in the Treasure Valley. Um, we have a very limited transit system, but um, I'm originally from coastal California. I consider San Francisco home, so public transit is a really big passion of mine, and um, I'm interested in ways that we can incorporate um, a more robust transit system throughout the Treasure Valley and how we might be able to accommodate that. Um, and then I'm also very interested in the ways that the zoning committee is going to affect the educational system locally. Um, a lot of people don't realize that zoning and things like property tax is directly affect <clears throat> especially k-12 education and who gets to go to which schools and which what kind of money gets distributed where um, so i'm really interested in bringing a uh, perspective on the education um, system to the committee as well so, thank you thank you uh damon uh hi um, i'm damon woods uh i similar to uh brad nielsen um i'm in the west boise area, um, kind of near Colin Fairview, the Winstead neighborhood area. Uh, so I'm there most mornings with my dog. Um, I, I grew up here since age five. I went away for my undergrad at Montana State, but since I've come back, uh, did grad school here. I'm now a professor at University of Idaho at the Boise Extension Campus in the architecture department. 
Uh, but my background's in mechanical engineering. Uh, so I really focus on how buildings use energy and occupant comfort. Uh, specifically, like I, I do a lot of research with Idaho Power, um, looking at the economics of different energy codes. Uh, and, um, you know, I have a heart for sustainability and part of the Sierra Club and have a vested interest here in Boise and just um, kind of like Marissa was saying, you know, keeping pedestrian um, and bikeways kind of breathable and, and open as um, the occupant density increases. So uh, uh, thanks, thanks for having me on this community. I'm honored to be part of it. Thank you. So we have now heard from 19 of our members. We are missing one individual today. Uh, that is Shellen Rodriguez, and uh, she has promised that she'll be with us next time. She had a vacation planned during this time, so, so we'll be meeting her on our next uh, meeting time. But as you can see, we had a lot of people that are so very excited and have so many different experiences. Some people have lived here for long periods of time while others are, are newly joining us. Um, we have family history, um, people have businesses in the area, um, they enjoy walking uh, to and from places, taking public transit, they have children, um, and you know some of us are, are homeowners while others um, are renters, um, and we heard that people have lived here uh, for many years, and then we have some new homeowners in our group as well. So. Uh, just listening to all of those experiences, we know how the zoning code can affect each and every one of us. Um, and the other exciting part that I heard too is talking about the professional organizations that people belonged to and the experiences and the schools. And we're hoping that each one of you takes those individual experiences and, and shares them amongst your community. So residents within your area, um, school membership programs, professional organizations, um, you know, possibly your, your church or other um, activities that you may participate in. Um, share our ideas with them, gather input, because you're going to be that conduit that's going to help us. We as a city cannot touch every single citizen, but with your help, we can touch that many more. So we are really excited to have you. Um, you guys will be a huge part of crafting and molding the zoning ordinance as we move forward. Um, but we do have a number, another group of individuals that will be helping assist us as we move forward as well. Um, and that is our consulting group. We actually have uh, a joint effort. Uh, it's between Clarion Associates, which is based out of Denver, Colorado, as well as Kushlan and Associates uh, based out of Boise, Idaho. And I'm going to go ahead and let them um, introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about their experience and what they'll be bringing forward to each one of us as we move forward. Uh, Don, do you want to start? Sure. Uh, I'm Don Elliott. I'm a director with Clarion Associates, which, uh, as Andrea said, is based in Denver. We also have an office in uh, North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Uh, we're thrilled to be involved in this, and we have had interactions and, and worked with the city of Boise uh, several times in the past. Um, I'm going to resist the temptation to tell you a lot about it because we're going to have a, a very short PowerPoint later just organizing and walking you through the structure of the project. We'll have a chance then. I will say that uh, I am a planner and a lawyer. I have worked in the field for, I hate to say it, at the firm for 25 years and in the field for probably closer to 35 years. And so um, I loved the comment, zoning is critical. That is exactly why I have spent my life doing it, because if you don't think it changes the future of your city, you're not paying attention. So uh, I will, I also, I will mention that I sit on the board, uh, Denver planning board in my spare time. And so uh, no stranger to the issues that come up when you try to balance a whole lot of competing values in a high growth environment and uh, look forward to working with you. I think with that, I'm gonna turn it first and ask Darcy White to say a few words and then Gabby and then Diane Cushland. So Darcy. Great, thanks Don. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, really happy to be here. So I am uh, Don's counterpoint in our Denver office. I focus on comprehensive planning and in fact, was uh, spent many hundreds of hours working on Blueprint Boise 
Um, we started that process, I think in 2007 or so, a little bit later than that, wrapped up in 2011. So know a lot about, um, really got to love the city working on that project. Um, also was involved uh, with the Ada County Comprehensive Plan Update. And both of those efforts, we work with Diane Cushlin, who is working with us on this project. So have a lot of familiarity with the issues that many of you raised and have really seen the city evolve over the last uh, 10 to 15 years. So I'm really excited to be part of this and kind of uh, take things to the next level uh, through this process. So thank you. All right, and my name is Gabby Hart. Um, thanks so much for being here and being involved in this committee. Um, it's great to, to see you all even virtually. Um, so I am an associate with Clarion and uh, the majority of my work is with development codes. And prior to this, I was actually working in the public sector for the city of Boulder, Colorado, which has a lot of similar issues with growth and housing affordability. And um, I am no stranger to the pressures of of working within a code with issues like that. So I'm I'm really excited to be part of this project to to improve to improve that for Boise. Um, and yeah. Well, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Diane Kushlan. I'm a 20 year resident of Boise, and I've been a planner for over 47 years. Most of my career was serving local government in California, Washington State, and now in Idaho. Um, my consulting practice has been uh, devoted exclusively to Idaho nonprofits and uh, local governments. I've supported comprehensive updates of zoning codes for the cities of Meridian, Garden City, Sun Valley, and Idaho Falls, and probably a, a dozen other little smaller uh, zoning change projects. I've taught a course on planning and zoning initially at Boise State University, and now at the University of Idaho for the past eight years. Uh, it's been a real privilege to work with Clarion, Clarion in um, a couple of projects, uh, most importantly, Boise Blueprint. So I'm very excited to work with them again. I'm very excited about this committee. It's really an impressive group of individuals, and I thank you all for your service to the community. And I'm particularly excited to be able to uh, work and support efforts in my, in my own community as well. So thank you very much for this chance. Back to you, Andrea. Perfect. So the, that will be our team that will be helping us um, as our consulting members. Uh, but we do have uh, three uh, City of Boise members that will be our primary uh, individuals that will be taking you through the process. Um, I'm the first one of those individuals, and my name is Andrea Tuning. Uh, I've been with the City of Boise for 15 years, and prior to that, I was with the Ada County Highway District for almost six years. Um, I am a third generation Boisean, <laughs> so I can't compete with some of you, but I can hold my own on the on the board. Um, I love the City of Boise, and I love working for the City of Boise. So really my goal is to be a part of creating a sustainable future for everyone to be able to enjoy everything that we've all had the opportunity to do. Um, my supervisor and my director is Mark Lavin. Uh, Mark, did you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Thank you, Andrea. I'm Mark Lavin. I'm the director of planning and development services. I've been with the city coming on about a year and a half. Um, prior to that, I spent about 31 years in, in retail development, but on the actual retailer side, I, I was a licensed civil engineer, or got my degree in license in civil engineering, and then worked more on the real estate development side, but decided to make a career change because I wanted to work with an exciting team, and I mean that. <laughs> the city of Boise, uh, you know, we have our, our uh, pluses and minuses, but I sure believe there are a lot more pluses than minuses. And I think the other thing is I wanted to learn, you know, I wanted an environment where I'm learning. So uh, 
uh, you know, I think it was Drew that may have said this is a once in a lifetime project and I'm, I'm happy to be here for this. And I think we have a great team of people and it's going to take us all. So uh, thank you all for for serving and contributing to this effort. And then in addition to myself and Mark, we have Deanna Dupuy. Deanna. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Deanna Dupuy. I'm a comprehensive planner with the city of Boise, and I've been with the city of Boise for about two years. I am a renter who li currently lives um, near Boise State. Uh, of course, we are probably our neighbors. Um, and I first want to just say thank you so much to everyone for sharing your unique perspectives as a neighborhood planner. And I've gotten to work with many of you in the past, uh, really hearing how you guys um, take the landscape and these structures and make it your home in your neighborhood is really what fuels me. And um, it's what gets me excited about my work. And I really liked what Roberta said. Um, I hope that we can figure out a way together um, to go forward together because as you know, and uh, I'm an inherent optimist and I think that this is a once in a lifetime project and I think that we can do it right. And I'm happy to hear um, from all of you. Thank you, Deanna. So next we are really going to talk about uh, some of our project goals. Um, oh, I did go ahead and identify some of those project goals in the agenda that you sent out. But I'm going to let Don with Clarion give his brief presentation because he's going to walk us through what we can expect through the process. And it's really going to identify what some of those key goals are. So I will go ahead and let you take it away, Don. Now, now we'll see if the technology works the way it's supposed to, right? Uh, which it usually doesn't, but that's OK. There we go. Let's try this. Let's hope this is right. All right, so we have a short slideshow, uh, and I mean short. It's what ten slides, something like that. Uh, I, I I'm going to start off with a couple things. Uh, one, uh, and I should have said this before. I was impressed too with just the variety of backgrounds, geographic backgrounds, and interests. For those of you who do not have a background in planning, don't be intimidated. Uh, it is this is that's why you're here uh, because not everybody does, and Boise is a city for everybody, and you don't shouldn't have to be an expert in zoning to understand it and that's one of our goals so but i will say honestly there are times when we start these projects and uh, i listen to the backgrounds and the people on the task or on the advisory committee and i kind of think uh oh we're in trouble they're all sitting on one end of the scale it's the businesses or it's uh, environmental interests or it's all people with some special interests or it's anti-growthers or it's pro-growthers and i am thrilled with what I heard today uh, in terms of the the variety of interests, the willingness to learn, the openness and uh, you know, the deep, deeply deep love for Boise and to 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 keep it a great place. So I am inspired by that and, and uh, that uh, working with people like you is, is why we do what we do. I do want to talk about this. Um, this project kind of started last year. We came out for a very initial visit. And it was right before your mail election, and that resulted in a change of administration. And so we took some initial steps, and then we put it on pause. And I want to assure you that the pause was very deliberate, and then it became a long pause because of COVID. But the point is that uh, the uh, Mayor McLean wanted to kind of start again and make sure that a wide range of voices were included and that we weren't missing anything. So. We're in this unusual situation. We're not on ground zero. We've been to Boise a lot. Uh, I, I have been there a few times. Darcy's been there a lot. Uh, we were impressed with what we saw, uh, but we have done a lot of asking, and yet it's kind of a it's a it's a half written book. It's waiting for you to work with us to complete it, to to tell us what we've heard correctly, to tell us what we're misunderstanding, to tell us that your perspective never has been included in what we're doing. So with that in mind, um, this is not the first day that that the Clarion team with Diane Kirschlin has has been talking about this. It's been months, but we're thrilled to get started again and to start with a, a new team, a broad and diverse range of people to, to guide us through it. So who's Clarion? I said I'd say a few more words with this, what I do for a living, amazingly to people. Uh, we have worked with about 223 uh, projects around the country doing zoning, everything from fix this, fix that, to rewrite us a code. I tend to focus on entirely new 
zoning ordinances for big cities, complicated cities, medium sized cities, but places with complicated problems that or challenges that require them to balance competing interests. I find that energizes me. I was the project manager for a rewrite of the Philadelphia codes and the Indianapolis codes and the Albuquerque codes and and a long time ago Detroit. But we've been in, the firm's been in business for almost three decades and we have about 20 people in the two offices. This is the team you heard from most of us and saw most of us. I will introduce um, Holly White is uh, in our Denver office and she does a lot of visual communication, graphics, and most new codes use a lot more pictures, diagrams, charts, tables, and illustrations to basically try to make what could be a complicated field much more understandable to visual learners and those who whose eyes glaze over when they read text, but they get it when they see a picture. And so Holly is on the team for that perspective. Um, we're gonna, we, we, again, it's a team, it works together and we're looking forward to getting started. So here are some of the focus areas that Andrea was kind of lateraling to me for, and she'll probably wanna say a few words after this. As uh, Darcy said, the city worked a long time on Blueprint Boise, and that is the first thing listed here. Why are we doing this? And the answer is there's been a disconnect between the goals of Blueprint Boise and the administration of the zoning ordinance. And so uh, also not just Blueprint Boise, but you can see the other uh, activities among the other activities that have gone on. Grow our housing, keep Boise moving, community conversations, and of course, the, the task forces that Mayor McLean appointed when she took office to try to get her arms around what people wanted to see. Engaging citizens and stakeholders is a challenge in the time of COVID. You know what? It's a challenge always, and it is, uh, to be very candid, not hard to get the numbers up, but hard to make sure that everybody is being heard. And from the start uh, of this project, that's been a priority. Zoning, not to get technical, uh, tends to tends to lend itself into a three-way categorization with kind of traditional, meaning you regulate primarily on uses, form, you regulate primarily on form, performance, meaning, well, I don't care what you call it or what it looks like as long as it doesn't annoy me. Those are three approaches. Uh, our firm specializes in trying to talk with you and for work out, okay, in this situation, which tool works best to meet your challenges. I will tell you, and I will uh, be happy to debate you privately outside this meeting, none of these are right. There is not a right approach to medium or large city zoning. Every large and medium city takes a look at them and chooses the tool that fits it best and chooses the tool that does the most good things with the least downsides to get to where they want to go. So uh, one of our goals is to say, let's not leave anything unlooked at but let's not be doctrinaire about we're going to do X. We're going to do what's right for Boise. That's the only X. Uh, incentivizing design. Design has come up. Several of you serve on design review. It came up a lot in our initial meetings uh, last uh, winter. Uh, and diversity of land uses. Both of those are uh, challenges uh, because on a given day, the market may want to do one thing and not another, but we all want it to do a variety of things over the long run. Streamlining development review procedures. Um, I have yet to have a client in the last 25 years who said, please make my review and approval processes slower and more cumbersome. Um, uh, the goal and the general strong trend around the country is use this process. Use this process when you are discussing with key people who care about the city how to balance all the competing values and goals, some of which cannot be achieved in the same place in the same day. Sometimes, one goal says go left and the other says go right. How do we do it? But use this process to be clear and to come up with a consensus or as close as you can get on what the rules and the rewards should be in Boise for doing things that take you where you want to go and then make the review and approval process as predictable as possible so that people take you seriously. When you say we want X and we're not interested in seeing a lot of Y, we make it easier to get through the process with X than with Y. Uh, that's, that is by far the national trend. It is almost universally the national trend. Very few projects get a lot better by making the approval process a lot more complicated. Uh, but you do spend a lot of time and money and you drive off some people who would have invested and done what you wanted to do, but for the time, expense, and brain damage of getting through the process. And finally, and not least, user friendliness. I mentioned graphics making the code user my, my personal goal and i will admit i've never achieved it but i keep trying to come close is 
I think the zoning system and ordinance should be intelligible to a person with a high school education and that you should not have to call your friends to figure out what you can do with your property. And so we do that by trying to figure out how clear can we make it. And all new codes are a lot more visual and graphically rich than the ones they replace. Those are among the things we're aiming at here, uh, at just based on discussions so far and the and frankly, the values the city put in its RFP when they said, please uh, tell us why you're the best to do this job. I think Andrea will want to gain on it. Once again, we are building on the foundations you have done. I'm I'm going to ask I'm going to say this before someone else says it. Gee, it's been a while since we got Blueprint Boise adopted. Shouldn't we redo it? Answer: No. Um, the prob it is much. Uh, it's not much easier, but it is easier to come up with a vision for your community and refine that vision through a bunch of additional processes than it is to face the hard issue: What should the rules be? How much flexibility in those rules should there be? What are we willing to reward in terms of better design or better behavior or more diverse mix or affordable housing? What are we? That's that's why I do what I do, and that's why we do what we do. That is hard. If you loop back all the time and say, "Let's rethink the vision," you don't. I, I, with all candor, you don't get there. And I I have numerous cities who are very frustrated with their planning and zoning because each time they have an opportunity to fix the rules and incentives and procedures, they go back and revision. Why? Because it's easier. And so uh, uh, one of the interesting things that happened in the last year when we came out earlier was we did ask people, now this was six months ago, but you were still under a lot of growth pressure. What do you, what parts of Blueprint Boise do you want to see happen? And what should we be scratching our heads over? I will tell you that the va almost everybody said, I'm just disappointed it didn't happen. I put a lot of time into it. We need to make this thing happen. If there are things in here that have become dated, they'll we'll spot them in the course of writing the zoning ordinance. But uh, with the exception of maybe one or two people, nobody said we need to go revisit. The, the thread was, uh, we need to do this. We need to make the zoning ordinance make this happen. So how do we organize it? We have uh, these initial phases, uh, refining the work plan, organizing the work, doing outreach, making sure we've cast a very broad net. You are part of that effort, but you're not the only part of that effort, it, it, especially in COVID. It takes a lot of effort to make sure you're listening. Then drafting it. I'm going to slow down there. Then the consolidated draft. We draft it in parts. I'll talk about that consolidated draft. And finally, review and adoption of the code. Let's talk about that in more detail. So obviously organizing, how should the kickoff happen? How do, in addition to this meeting, public, virtual public engagement meetings that are as inclusive as possible to make sure you're hearing voices. Interviewing people who frankly, probably won't come to a public meeting, but would be happy to share what they know about this process or their neighborhood and, and need to be talked to in smaller groups. Obviously keeping design review, planning commission and elected officials involved in this. And then saying in light of what we heard, do we need to tweak the game plan for how we're going about this work? Public engagement, I'm not going to dwell on this because I think it'll come again. Uh, we we always use a project website. There is a project website. There is an open-ended list. If you have friends, and we beg you, if you have friends or neighbors who care about this but didn't get on this committee or didn't know about it or don't know how to engage with the city, please tell them to join it. This list grows from the, it's already there, but it grows throughout the process to make sure that anybody who clicks on the box gets invited to updates. Interactive public meetings, we have been very candid for the time being, these have to be virtual. Um, this public engagement approach is gonna have to be flexible because at some point we all hope when we cross our fingers and we knock on wood, we will be able to do some in-person meetings and with substantial groups of people who can interact in person. When that happens, we will have to refine it, but for now it's virtual and the interviews with key individuals are virtual. And again, you are the citizen advisory committee meeting. Um, I'll I'll be honest, we do need, we have, and we will refine, and we will continue to refine a public engagement plan. My experience has been, very bluntly, candidly, what we write on paper today is less important than what we learn along the way. Three months from now, six months from now, nine months from now, we will know more about who's not at the table, who have we not reached. And the more important public engagement is not writing the perfect plan up front. It is the willingness to change your course and to put more effort into different things in order to meet people where they are. So you are not uh, assuming 
that everybody's at the table when you know they're not. So it's that flexibility in this approach, especially during COVID, but particularly for disadvantaged communities and communities of color that that makes the difference in a successful process. OK, when we draft it, after we refine this, we will draft this in segments. I'll show you a timeline in a minute. We have learned that it does not work well for us to go up, listen to you, come back and say, ha, this is what you said. Here is a three or 400 pages zoning ordinance. It's what you said. Good. Uh, enjoy reading it. It helps to do it in segments. Let's talk first about what kinds of zone districts are needed in Boise and what you should be able to do and the, the basic form and, and, and massing of buildings. How big and what can you do in it? And how does that tell us about the places, the zone districts that are needed? That's the foundation of zoning, whether you follow form-based or use-based zoning approaches. Next is quality. How much parking? How much lighting? How much landscaping? Access, circulation, buffering, uh, connectivity. The whole point, uh, signs, the whole point is not can I do a hotel, but how do I do it? If I have a right to do a hotel or I get approval, how do I lay that out? And what does it look and smell and feel like to the neighbors and to the traffic system? Finally, in light of those two things, if those are the rules and those are the incentives, how predictable and if fair and efficient can we make our approval process? Uh, the hard work is in coming up with these rules. The process is the, the wrong way to slow things down because you got the rules wrong. So that's why we do. And each time we put her out, we're going to put a draft out and we're going to walk it through public engagement so that on in one round, you're not going to be talking about parking, going to be talking about zone districts, uses and building forms. Next time we will go all the way around with development design standards and quality. And then we'll go all the way around with public outreach on procedures and administration. Tonight we're talking about how you get through the system and what that needs to be. How do who makes the decision? What criteria do they use to make this decision? We find it's a much better way, especially for non zoning geeks to be able to focus on a discrete set of questions. Now we will take comments on any of these topics anywhere along the way. If you came to say X, we will hear X. But I want to be very clear with this group because of time, budget and the importance of momentum. Where there won't be a second and a third and a fourth draft of module one, the yellow one. We will put it out there. We will listen to folks. We will take notes. We will record it and then we will move on to two and we'll do the same and three and the same. When we get to the next slide, the next step, we roll it all together and we will answer as many of those things as possible. By the way, in each of these, we will footnote all the changes from your current rules and, and incentives. So you'll know what's changed and what's not changed. But frankly, the real reason is uh, often people come up with something when we do development quality standards or procedures and they say, we got to change X and we say, uh, you know what? The way to do that is go back and change something we wrote in module one. So you can't perfect each piece. Each piece is interrelated. They're divided into modules because it helps the public engage knowingly about what the topic is tonight and how and to focus their minds on this part of the puzzle. Uh, and then we go into writing a consolidated draft at the end. So I did want to point out, you can see the timeline here, but down at the bottom, phase three zoning map, we're talking about three installments. When we get to the end of that, we will put out a map that says, OK, we we may no decisions at all, not, not even a thought or a whim. We may have created new zone districts. We may have consolidated old zone districts. We may have decided that some of the existing zone districts no longer fit blueprint Boise's picture of the future of Boise. So we need to show the public, OK, based on what you said, we're going to do in 3-2 and 3-3, three, three, integrated draft of the whole ordinance and a map that goes with it so that you start seeing, OK, I understand my zone district used to be called X. Now it's called Y, and this is the map of where Y would involve. So it is doing that together as 3-2 and 3-3. Three, three. Then we test it. We have private developers and the staff go through and say, will this allow people to build what we want and not allow them to build what we said we didn't want? Is this too restrictive? Meaning all the developers come in and say, well, it sounded great, but you know, you can't do that on any of the available sites in Boise. It just won't work. Uh, so you test it. Then you do a public draft after you've tested it. We fixed, we, we did part one, part two, part three. We put it all out together. We listened to feedback with a map. Then we refine it based on that feedback and testing and say, OK, now you're ready to begin the discuss the public adoption process. Basically, the, the pub, the, 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 now we have a draft that's ready for prime time. 
It's been tested and we're ready to start the adoption process. So I'm happy to answer that question uh, to go into more detail. Next steps, continue to refine the public engagement plan, taking into account what I said earlier about flexibility. See if this comments we get from you and from others and from the public and people who comment on the website, whether we need to refine what I just went through um, and prepare a detailed assessment. We have, because we started six months ago, nine months ago, we've looked at your code a lot and we have our thoughts, but we have heard things. Uh, we have also heard conflicting things sometimes. And we, Clarion, based on our experience, have gone through and said, this looks kind of strange. Uh, why do you do it this way? So we have some of that work done. But as I said, it's a half completed book because we want to make sure that you have an opportunity to add to it and to tell us that some of the chapters that we thought we heard before are not not accurate. So it's in your hands at this point. But that's what we do an assessment. That's the roadmap. And then we will put that out and say, what does the public feel about what we identified as what it what should be fixed and what should be carried over and what should be retired because it is proven not to be in the best interests of Boise and its vision. So I think with that, I'll turn it back. As always, uh, Andrea will tell me that I spent way too much time talking, but uh, I hope that orients you to, uh, to kind of where we are and how we'd like you, uh, why it's important and why I'm so thrilled that, that you're here and you've volunteered for this. I will, I will, I'll say this as my closing comment. Uh, you you volunteered for the hard part of the job because ever because deeply felt values come into tension with each other in zoning and resolving them is not easy that's why it's worth doing and that's why it takes two years to do it the writing is complex but we could write this a lot faster what's what is hard is staff and the consultants and you and then the public coming to some level of agreement that among the different balancing acts we could do, this is a good one. This balances the various things that are tugging the real estate market and the neighborhoods mm -hmm. and the university in different directions. So you volunteered for the hard part of this work. I'm happy to be a part of it and I'm happy that you're all part of it. So thanks. Thank you, Don. So can everybody see that? The project goals? Yes. Perfect. Yep. Uh, so as Don explained, you know, really what our project goals are as we move forward, moving through this project, um, we want you to know that these are kind of what we've initially heard um, that are really important. Now these goals may evolve, they may grow, they may, um, may change as we hear input from you, our citywide advisory committee, and as we hear from our citizens and stakeholders as well. So just please keep in mind that these are, are fluid and, and they'll be evolving uh, throughout the process. And so we'll come back and revisit them pretty regularly so that we have a full understanding of you know, what our goals are and, and what is going to guide us. Um, and as we think about our, our goals, we also need to think about our individual roles throughout the process. Um, originally, we did talk about, um, we had 81 applicants, but only 20 individuals were able to be selected to participate. And each one of you is going to provide us um, individual experiences and ideas and uh, thoughtful comments. And so we really want to achieve some type of balance. Um, and I think we have a really good balanced group. We're going to hear from people that um, are in relatively stable areas from of the city of Boise that may not change a lot. And we're gonna hear from others that, that are rapidly changing as we grow. Um, and so we really want to hear all of those perspectives so that we can balance what those interests are and, and come to a collaborative decision on what will be the best for the city of Boise. Uh, what we can promise is that we are going to listen to you and we are going to share each one of our ideas and directions and questions with you. 
and we hope that you provide us with quality feedback that we are then able to share um, not only with our project management team, um, but with our elected officials. These are the individuals that are going to be making some very difficult choices. And as we do make these difficult choices, I want you to remember that, you know, we may not all be able to get 100% of what we're looking for as we move forward. Um, but we can come up with a compromise that we're going to get a quality product at the end. And if we're all following our passion and our vision and and we enter this with good intentions, I think that we're going to have a really great product in the end. So um, we will be sharing all of your um, ideas with our elected officials. And we'll also include all of your input uh, in each one of our reports as we move forward through the three processes that Don had described. So um, if you ever have any questions or comments, you are free to, con to contact me at any time. Um, I will go ahead and send out an email following this. It'll have uh, my contact information, including a telephone number as well as an email address. I'm also going to include um, our website address to where you can uh, revisit some of the documents that we have. You can take a look at some of our educational materials. You will be aware of all of the public engagement activities that that'll be forthcoming so that you can not only share that information with others, but you can be a part of each, each component of that. Um, you will likely be seeing things uh, slightly before what the general public may. Um, so for instance, we may run some ideas by you um, prior to uh, putting something online for others to see. Um, it'll actually be a really quick turnaround, but that, that may occur and uh, that's okay. We want you to still share out that information. If you have questions, let me know. Um, I'm here to help you and to kind of walk you through the process and be a conduit uh, between you and the public, um, as well as our elected officials and our consultant as we move forward. Um, does anybody have any questions for our project management team, for our consultant, um, on how we may be moving forward? Or Andrea, there was a question in the chat about uh, uh, the committee wanting a copy of Don's PowerPoint. Is that possible? Absolutely. I will go ahead and attach that in, in our follow up email as well. And then the other thing, too, that I'd like to uh, let you know that when I send up a follow up email, um, I will go ahead and and provide the information that I have promised. But in addition to that, I'm going to ask for each one of you to compile a three to five sentence biography about yourself. Uh, sometimes we're asked who is a participant on our committee, and so sometimes that's really helpful. So whether you want to share your personal experiences, um, your volunteer experiences, your professional experiences, we'll leave that up to you um, because all of those perspectives are critical and important as we move forward. So, but that'll also be coming your way as well. Um, and then, yeah. before Whoop, go ahead. And Andrea, there's one of the Daniel has his hand raised, just trying to hope. That's what I was going to do. Yes, yes. Yeah, Daniel. Yeah, um, I, Don, I was wondering if you could um, talk a little bit about uh, how you, um, in your process with other cities, kind of how do you, with a group of 20, uh, who, who, who's not going to agree on everything, um, you know, how do you surface and resolve those points of general agreement, disagreement? I'm just, I'm, you know, because it's such a multifaceted yeah. uh, thing to come up, you know, to go even through those three, three processes. And there, there are some, I think there are probably some core philosophical differences, you know, among, um, 
you know, to paint it kind of, you know, hey, we want to keep Boise the way it is. And then we know we want Boise to accommodate a lot of growth. And, mm-hmm. you know, we're willing, you know, people, you know, lots of new housing and, and Boise that looks different and can accommodate more people versus a Boise that looks very much like it looks right now. Mm-hmm. And so how and then there's all different dimen- you know, different dimensions of that conversation. Um, so how do you work just, I mean, so we can all kind of get ready for how we're going to engage with each other. Cause I think there was a lot of positive intention to kind of listen and, and, and work with each other, which I was really happy to hear, but I'm just interested in terms of your kind of group process with uh, an advisory group of 20. Oh yeah. I, I really got to run. I'm sorry. <laughs> love to stay and answer your question, but just can't. So no, I'm kidding. Um, I guess I have two, a two or I, about a, a three-part answer. We don't have a formula. Um, what we bring to the table, what I bring to the table, is I've done this for a long time all over the country in a lot of places. And so I think what helps when we have conflicting points of view or people or, or deeply held values that can't both happen in the same place at the same time. You gave the example of traditional looking housing versus stuff that doesn't look quite like this, but it houses more people. Um, is to bring to our bring to you the experience we've had around the country saying do you for everything you do in a zoning ordinance there is a potential unwanted consequence of it what is the downside of doing this if you went this way rather than that way you'd achieve this good what have we seen around the country that says but you're probably going to pay a price and here's the price you're going to pay for that um and I guess when you say process, I think one of the reasons our firm has been successful is that we try to be very honest about that and say, you know, what you just said sounds right. It's, you know, what someone said sounds right. Um, But if you try to do it, uh, the following cities have tried to do that. And what they found was the development community didn't respond the way they thought it would. It, It responded in a different way. Or the people who engaged in the process were not the people who they thought would engage in the process. And so I I, I hate to be simplistic, but it's candor. It's being honest because my experience is even in a group of 20, 12, 20, whatever it is, if you hear each other ask questions and you all hear the the answer to that question from our experience, um, uh, there will be a narrowing of the range of differences of of opinion as, as reasonable people start saying, well, you're right, I care deeply about that, but if that really is what happens or is likely to happen, I, I'm i not sure I'm going to push for that particular point as far, as hard as I thought I was. I'm willing to listen to some other ideas. And so that's part of it. Part of it is if somebody says, you know, I want X, and we look at it and say, that's exactly the opposite that Blueprint Boise says, we're going to say that and say, you know, uh, at this point, we're not rewriting Blueprint Boise. Uh, I probably will get in trouble for saying this with either Mark or Andrea or both, uh, but I will say it anyway. When you've got a vision that I think still has fairly broad support, broad support in Boise, like uh, Blueprint Boise, and you get to write a zoning ordinance, you don't turn the car around and go the other way. We talk about which tools could be effective in making that happen, which zoning tools could be effective in making that happen. And as I said earlier, there are there is no free lunch. Almost everything you choose in governance has a consequence to it, and you could talk about it. Now, if we can agree, if the the wah in the group is, I, we have two or three people who really are not happy about this, but I think most of them are happy with this. That's kind of what we tend to go with. Um, and if we cannot reach it, if it's ten and ten, which I've never had happen, and you just are torn asunder by the fact that no one can agree on an an acceptable zoning tool that Boise would be willing to support uh, to get at this challenge. To be honest, sometimes that good aspect of the plan doesn't make it into the zoning ordinance because you, you, you couldn't agree. You agreed in 2012. You thought there were some zoning tools that could be used to do it, but upon deep reflection, you're really completely divided about doing that or whether the city could support. Now, I've had that happen very rarely, but I will say that, that the choice is not, do we follow Blueprint Boise or do we go back the other way? The problem is, do we do we follow Blueprint Boise and zoning can do this in a way that there's significant support? Or does Blueprint Boise say do X and we can't find a legally and fair and politically effective 
a politically supported way to get X to happen. So X turns out to be about part of the plan that doesn't get reflected in, in codes. And that's true of every comp plan. Zoning can't do everything. There are lots of great ideas in codes that do not wind up in zoning because either A, zoning is not the right tool to do this, or B, we couldn't agree on a, on a tool that was acceptable. My last part of my answer is, having heard all of these conversations, in, in the end, um, we work for the city of Boise. And so we go back and take all of your feedback, plus the feedback of citizens and stakeholders. And if there are areas of disagreement, we talk to staff about it and say, you know, do you want to, what do you, what do you want to do here? Um, in the end, it's up to city council and city council is going to listen to the planning commission and planning commission is going to deal with the draft that staff put in front of them. And so at some point they're, they're the planners. They need to make a call. We're going to let this one go. You know, it's a, uh, there's going to be too much angst and political cost to be paid, or we don't have the staff to do it. And that has happened. Everybody agrees you want to do X and upon reflection and talking with staff and looking at the budget and looking at staffing, it is not only unlikely it could happen, it's not likely that you're going to have the money and the information to do that in the future either. So there's kind of a reality test that happens when you go back to staff and say, can this happen? So um, any, that's a long-winded answer, but that's the best I can do right now. Thanks. Brad has his hand up, I guess. Yeah, Brad. So is that how we're going to do this? We're going to raise our hand. Uh, OK, <laughs> not used to this. Uh, multi, you know, not being on, not being uh, physically around people to communicate. So this is all new. The whole process is going to be new to me. Um, so I'm going to probably ask some silly questions um, uh, till I become educated on on the process and try to get over my prejudices of how I think I this should go. But um, I just had some general questions. I noticed that uh, Don had a critical timeline. It looked like it was two and a half years long. Is this? Uh, do we have a goal that's supposed to be met by in two and a half years? Is that is that what I'm seeing? Andrea, is that for you or for me? Um. <laughs> uh, either one. So I'll go ahead and give it a, a, a whirl. Uh, so we have established a timeline. Uh, the timeline has been established to kind of follow a logical sequence. Uh, we think that the uses and the forms uh, is module number one will be the one that everybody participates in the most. We're going to have a lot of public feedback that occurs during that. As we move to phase two, we might lose some individuals because now we're getting into some more of those technical things that are a little more difficult to understand. Um, but we're still going to have quite a bit of engagement and then finally module three is going to be that process and procedure a lot of people really aren't into what those legal um, processes are but they are critical to the overall portion of that and so we're going to have less people there but we want to make sure that we're engaging the most people in the most critical part so uh, module one is going to be the most difficult where we have all of the people that are going to be participating. Um, you might lose some as we move forward, but each one of those kind of gives us momentum to move forward into the other so that we start to to build upon the foundation that we have and we're going to get into deeper and deeper detail as we move forward and I'm glad that you said that, you know, this is new to me and that's OK. This is new to a lot of people. So if you don't know what a term or an idea might be, go ahead and let us know. And really, not only are we going to be able to explain that to you, but we can also do a glossary of terms for the general public that we can put on the website, because if you have that question, someone else is likely to have that question as well so so let us know we can walk you through all of those things and and you know don has explained too that with with each action there's a reaction there's always a consequence to everything that we do and so you know as we hear these different perspectives we're going to evaluate what those consequences are and really try and balance those so um ask questions as they come up. If you don't feel comfortable asking questions in the group environment, 
you're welcome to send me a message. And I'm, I'm willing to bring that up to the group. I'm willing to answer that privately. However, you're going to learn best. Um, that's what we're here to do for you and to do for the city as a whole. So let me, yeah, let me just, no. go ahead. Can I, I'm going to add one thing. Um, I don't think there's a hard end to this project, meaning that once we get near the end, it's kind of up to the city how fast they move it forward through the adoption process. But I will say this, we need to do module one, two, three, and then put it all together with as many changes as possible. That's when it becomes real. That's when citizens, and and that's why a lot of time at the end, half this time or a third of it, is after we get there because at that point people who said i don't think they'll ever get there i i, I never I, I literally i've done a lot of projects like they said we we never thought it'd happen you know so that's when it becomes real once it's real and people say wow it looks better it's clearer it's it really is clearly an improvement i better read it so but you need to keep on a timeline momentum is important not to force it not to cram it down but the second reason it's important is If we stay on a timeline, the reasonable middle ground people who care about Boise will stay at the table and they'll come to the meetings. If we start falling off and it looks like this is going to take forever and they're being whipsawed around special interests, the only people who show up are the special interests and the paid lobbyists. And that is not a way to write a zoning ordinance. So the the people who are willing to stay involved and invest time, if it's going to get there and if we're having fair discussions, will not be there if they see the middle eroding and the people who are there are the people who only care about X or the people who are paid to be there for their clients. So we have to stay on some side of a schedule. Okay, just so I'm clear, um, and I don't know if I read this summer or what, but our appointment was a two year appointment. Mm -hmm. Is that is that correct? Yes. And the reason I asked that is because of that timeline going into two and a half years, potentially. Um, I would hate to get towards the end and then all of a sudden I'm not involved anymore. Um, is that a potential thing? We will not give you the boot. We promise. Oh, okay. <laughs> we're willing to stay at the table. Oh, okay. We want you to be there. So right. really, as she, Don- she was afraid if she told you the truth, you wouldn't volunteer. <laughs> okay. Well, I just, yeah, I'd hate to spend a lot of time and then all of a sudden my I'm done. But, uh, Educational materials was another question I had. You addressed that. I heard somebody mention that there was books being passed around or suggested for for this. Um, I'd like to see that on this chat line or whatever, wherever that comes from. And I have one other silly question here too. Um, Our area of of control or um, influence is the Boise city limits. Is that the truth or am I off on that? Uh, Cause so I happen to have two houses. One of them's in the city limits and one's on the outside. So I, I'm, I'm hit by both of, of you know, influences here. Um, so I'm just curious if our area of influence is just the city limits or at 80 County or how far does, how far is our reach? So our zoning code will impact everything that is within the city boundaries. So you will have to be within the city boundaries. However, I want you to be mindful and everyone else to be mindful that we have an area of impact. And so we have identified a reasonable area in which we will incorporate into the city over time. And so these rules will be applicable in those areas as well. So we really need to be thinking about not only what impacts us today, but really giving us some some innovative thought and how it will impact us in the future and how it will impact those various, those properties in the future as well. And so if you are looking at our land use map, it will like it will include our area of impact, and so we'll take a look at that as we move forward, and and we'll kind of walk you through that process as well. And I'm really glad that you had mentioned that you know you, you know maybe there's some books that are out there. We can certainly make recommendations for you to take a look at that as well. And we have a couple of really great websites that you can visit that have really short video clips that give you a really succinct view of of what's happening and if you have further interest we can take a deep dive okay thank you 
We have another hand, Ian. <laughs> yeah, a uh, quick question for Andrea. Um, and I think you might have touched on this a little bit. Uh, it sounds like the idea of this is to be transparent to the public. Um, I'm assuming if there's something that you are showing us that you do not want us to share, that you will tell us. <laughs> yes, um, but we won't have anything that's secret or private or anything like that. Um, so don't worry about that. If you have if you have materials or even if you have ideas, feel free to share those. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to be very transparent and open. And, and to add on that, each one of these meetings is open to the public. And so as we move forward, if you hear somebody that would like to be able to sit in and watch on that, let us know because we can include them to provide their individual links so that they can come in and watch as well. And then I'll go ahead and record each one of these sessions as well so that it can be reviewed by somebody should they choose to to take an interest. So go ahead and let me know. I, th I think Ian um, was I think Ian was referring to the fact that you said you might float some ideas by them before uh, they become publicly knowledgeable. And I think yeah. your answer is, look, when we distribute things, we expect they're going to hit the front page of the paper. So you know. got it. <laughs> Thank you. Is that did ben? I? Is that accurate? <laughs> yeah. Ben, did you have anything? I do. Yeah. Don, what communities has your team worked in or been studying later that you would consider comparable groups for Boise? I, I was gonna I forgot to say that at the end of my presentation. Do not ask me that question. No, I, I, I get it. Um the, the the honest short answer is we uh, we don't we don't compare talent cities like that. I don't have one that's like Boise, um, and that's not just consultant talk. It just doesn't work out that way. Uh, we we are work we are working uh, in medium sized cities all over the West and all over the country right now. Uh, we're working in I mean in places uh, that are rapidly growing or have a very strong growth. Uh, probably we're working in Rochester, Minnesota. We're just finished Bloomington, Indiana, where there was a lot of discussion about student housing and affordable housing and town gown relationships and the edges of things um, and affordable housing and mixed middle house and, and uh, new types of housing that don't fit into the old uh, frab fabric of the city. Um, we're also working in Fort Wayne, Indiana, which is, is kind of similar on some issues. But we've worked all over Colorado Springs right now. So I'm happy to talk to you but, um, about that. But when when we bid on a project like this, we don't say, oh, this is not going to be too hard. This is going to be a lot like X. Uh, it just doesn't work that way. Uh, we build it from the bottom up. Uh, the diagnosis that we will develop with you will tell you a lot about how we think your current zoning ordinance differs from other good practices around the country, but they won't come from one one city. There'll be things that we say, you know, I'm, I'm making this up. We think Rochester's approach to that was pretty cool. Um, Colorado Springs is a very interesting city. Uh, they are very conservative, uh, very conservative city, but we are writing their codes now. They've come up with some very innovative ideas that they're playing with that, that frankly, I, if I told you it was my idea, you'd think it was great. And if I told you it was Colorado Springs idea, you'd say, why are we listening to Colorado Springs? And so um, uh, we, we we try to respond to the challenges that we identify and that you identify and draw from whoever, wherever we've worked or invent a brand new one. So this one in Colorado Springs is not one that we parroted from anywhere. We just talked to them and said, you know what, maybe, maybe we ought to do this a different way. And uh, so we invented it. So. It's, I'm not avoiding your question, but there really isn't a comparable a city to Boise. So. Uh, Drew, you had a question? Yeah, probably a question for the whole project management team, but it seems like we've got kind of a jumbo jet sitting on the runway and about to take off, and there's various big levers and buttons to push here. <laughs> the first big one seems to be zoning map and uses. Um, if we have a month between meetings, is that a reasonable place for us to focus and do some marinating on what exists now and get most familiar with that section of code? Would that be a recommendation of the team? 
um, you know, I right now, you know, we are just really in the inform, educate and gather information phase. Um, so really, we're going to focus on giving you tools and examples and the information that you need to make good recommendations as we move forward. So yes, if you have questions or if you'd like to see anything, let me know. I'll distribute it to everyone so that everybody has the same information and is coming from the same place. Um, I'm absolutely happy to help in any way that I can. So just let me know if you are interested in, you know, in those types of things and we'll, we'll get those out. We also have a number of videos that are going to be uh, coming out. And so as all of that information comes out or as we update our website, I will keep you informed there as well. Uh, and then Andrea, I just wanted to add, and maybe I'm, if I understand you correctly, Drew, um, we're not next month not going to show you the first installment of the our proposed uses. Um, we're going to be working for the next couple of months on the education just to kick off with the public so that they know what's going on and they feel prepared to participate. And the first deliverable we would probably share with you would be the diagnostics report where um, Clarion's done an assessment and we've listened to the public of how our current zoning ordinance is working. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I wasn't in, intending okay. to see a first pass at the next meeting just code exists now if there was a good section for us to be most familiar with um, as we move forward was more of a question. Sure. But I think you've answered it. I think, I think I'm. Um, Byron, did you have a question? Thanks, Andrea. Um, I, actually, I think Deanna just uh, answered my question. It was in regards to um, best practices or a schedule for reaching out to our various uh, personal and professional communities. Um, I assume that we're going to get to that, um, but I just wanted to ask that question anyway. Yes, so we will be giving you information that you can share out um, and then we'll let you know too, um, you know, here's where we've been and here's where we're going so that you can kind of anticipate and then you can share that knowing that you know one group may have a particular in interest in and in one section or another and and they might have really valuable input that we need to hear so okay i guess a follow-up question would be is that a formal process that you're hoping for us to follow or is there sort of an informal information gathering exercise that we can engage with in our communities too? Yeah, well, I think the citywide advisory committee, just because of the size of us, we will will be somewhat structured and formalized. Um, but we want you to be organic and share that information as you see fit. And so, you know, we say, you know, take what you need and, and let us know the tools that you need to to best deliver those messages and and we'll, we can do that for you. So great. So Thank you very don't, much. Don't feel like you can't share. You can share anything <laughs> you want to. <laughs> great. Thank you. Uh, ben. Just going back to some of the questions in the chat about books and and recommendations. I would just offer one recommendation that anyone on the group that hasn't read Blueprint Boise, I think that would be a great place to start. I think it's really well written and makes you proud to be a Boisean. And given that the zoning ordinance is our tool to put the blueprint Boise into effect, I think if you haven't read it, I think that's good homework. Yeah. Ben, that's a great suggestion. Um, if you want to access that quickly, you can go to the city of Boise.org and you can put in zoning code rewrite. It'll take you to the zoning code web page and I will also be sending that out to you. But we have uh, two different links that'll take you to the existing zoning code so you can kind of explore and see what we have there. And then you can also click on Blueprint Boise. And 
and it'll kind of explain to you, you know, what is a zoning code? What is a comprehensive plan? And so those are actual written documents, but for some of those people that do better with visual learning uh, or audio learning, we'll have videos as well that accompany that. So there'll be lots of different facets and, and ways for each one of you to learn. Any other thoughts? Uh, we do have about 15 minutes left, and we have one item left on the agenda that we need to tackle, and that's really identifying a good day for uh, future meetings for this group. Um, so we do need to take into account uh, that we have Planning and Zoning Commission, City Council, and Design Review Committee uh, hearings that happen frequently, as well as Historic Preservation Commission as well. And we want to be able to keep those members of uh, elected and appointed officials involved. And so we'll have to work around their schedule. But other than that, we are really open to when works best for you. What we've heard with other committees is that the end of the day typically works best. Um, so if you can um, identify some times that might work for you, uh, a day that works best for you, and then maybe we can float that through both in the chat. If you don't feel comfortable chatting, you can also use, um, you know, the audio as well. Are we trying to stay before five o'clock in the evening or is there going to be some evening stuff required? Uh, you know, that's really up to the group. Uh, we want to make it most comfortable and best suiting time for everybody to get together. You'll want to keep in mind that uh, these meetings will probably be from two to four hours each time. So um, we we'll probably want to identify maybe a three hour window. I'm pretty flexible myself, so it doesn't really matter. I do work, so it's best if I can either do the end of the day or um, in the evenings too. But like I said, I'm pretty flexible. It's hard to get 20 people together at the same time every time. That's right. Yeah, I'm self-employed, so later in the day to not buy cut into my workday as much would be helpful for me. Andrea, you're muted, so we can't hear you. Uh, thank you, Don. Uh, we have a number of uh, recommendations on the table saying that Thursdays uh, seem to work well. Um, just for reference, we are at the third Thursday. Um, lots of people saying that uh, Any time after three works really best for them. At the end of the day, works best for them. Uh, we also have Wednesdays as well. Uh, I've got some votes for Fridays and some votes against Fridays. Uh, let's see. And yes, we can absolutely work in a short break if we're going long periods of time as well. So. Andrea, with this many people, I wonder if a doodle poll might not be a bad idea. We can. Um, so why don't I take some of the suggestions that are out there um, and we'll go ahead and send out a doodle poll and see what works for others. Um, it's looking like probably Wednesday or Thursday afternoon. So I'll go ahead and give you a couple of different options, whether it's like the second or third Wednesday or Thursday, and I will give you an update um, as to the input that we receive, um, and hopefully we can get everybody scheduled. If anybody has information that they want to have considered, feel free to put it in the chat because we can revisit this all later. So, so this is just one day a month we're talking about. Here. It is. Yeah. Okay. Is it hard to get to things accomplished one us? day a month? <laughs> what was that? Uh, 
did you want to spend more time with us? Well, well, I just wonder how, I mean, such a big task we got ahead of us. I just wonder if one day a month is really, I mean, covers it, but not trying to push us into anything more. I just, <laughs> I know humans. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, we did think about maybe looking at every other week, but we really want to be respectful of your time. And so we're going to try and keep it at one day a month. If the need arises or if we need to hold a special meeting, we can certainly do that. So, you know. Well, and if I if I could just weigh in, I, I, obviously it's up to the group and, and Andrea and the leadership team, but uh, from our experience, once a month will be enough. The The thing about zoning is that you can't, you can discuss issues a little bit in to try to get a flavor of which direction people want to go. But in the end, you have to look at the light. You have to look at the pictures and the graphs and the text. It, 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 it doesn't lend itself to vague statements. You have to look at it and say, I think that's too much. I think that's too little. So the key, uh, as, I, as I envision how this community will work, and, and Andrea may disagree, in between when we deliver drafts, we will try to work with Andrea to raise some of the key issues and get your sense of where the, what are the trade-offs and why is this a big deal and why is this worth scratching your head with a group of 19 other varied people, but it's not going to be making up the language. You're not going to be drafting on the fly. It's trying to get a sense. This is a big deal. We could go left. We could go center. We could go right. What's their sense of where we should go? But then a lot of, but then when we draft, uh, when we le put a module or a diagnosis on the table for for uh, for discussion, then the then that's what you're really looking for is those work sessions after you are actually all staring at the same draft. So, I think monthly will be fine. I, I mean, I I think you'd get bored and tired of me if it was biweekly. So. I think you're muted in Andrea. <laughs> Boy, I'm having trouble. So anybody have any parting thoughts before we depart? Um, I'll go ahead and send up a follow up email. Um, it'll have some educational ideas, our website. Um, I'll go ahead and send out a doodle poll as well as the link for you to fill out your bio. So Think critically about those three to five sentences that best describe you. And then, like I said, you know, our our communication doesn't stop when we're offline. You you have the ability to contact us um, anytime. Um, we can disseminate information. It will likely be if you ask a question or something, I will send it out to the larger group. Uh, just because I am a firm believer that if one person has a question, um, it's very likely that others will as well. And so that can be helpful and we all then are have the same information and the same foundation that we can build upon. And I would just add that that's kind of that's how we see it works best too. So uh, there are no there are no silly questions if you don't know the answer to them and the better the earlier we ask them, the better it goes. And so but do send them to Andrea. We it, it it does not help things to have a side conversation going with the consultant. That doesn't help because I just have to turn around and tell her what you told me. So um, it 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 really helps to have one conduit for information that we can all be a part of. So. Well, okay. Well, again, I want to thank everybody for their time today and their their commitment as we move forward. That. We can't do it alone, and so we're really excited to have so many different perspectives and so many qualified people that really have a passion for the city of Boise. It's 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 really good to see. All right. Well, with that, why don't we adjourn today's meeting, and then I will follow up with you shortly. Thank you, Andrea. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Good to meet everybody. I don't know what happened. I guess it's over, but I dropped off. So.